Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Kwanzaa. Happy New Year's and all that. Um, I'm in, I'm not home right now. I'm at my cousin's house. She don't even know I'm in her room. But that's besides the point. We gotta get this video out there. Um, and hopefully this video gets out before or on Christmas. But yeah, without further oh, sorry I don't have my popcorn right now, but trust me, trust and believe me. It's with us in spirits. But hopefully you have something to snack on. Preferably, I can't say the word. It's uh, it's popcorn. But if we don't have popcorn, but in eating something else, a snack is a snack. Hopefully you got your Adidas and cut a buddy. And without further ado, let's get it. So, so hopefully I can do this in one take. Because my sister's with me. My aunt's with me. My cousin is with me. They got a tendency of just interrupting whenever I'm making a video, but let's get it. Sup? Though, so, it's on. All right. My dad always loved going crazy with the Christmas lights when I was young. Right. He was an overachiever with it, and always had to have the most impressive display on the block. That's wow. The year of 2010 was no exception. He wow. Well, first of all, Bill, electric bill out the ass. <laughs> I just want to let you know that. Like, my bill right now, no more than what? $60 at the most. If it's more than 60 we got a problem. Right? But you already clucking up because you try to, you try, your dad... Is already sus and is already a clucky because he wants his he wants his house to be the most uh known with the lights and most like noticeable with the Christmas lights. But at the same time, you want your house to stand out. But at the same time, your your house is the most noticeable one you feel what you feel what you feel what i'm saying you're picking up what i'm putting down as far as like a clucky in your neighborhood your house stands out because you got the most going on you want to be extra <laughs> set the lights up on timers so that they'd flash along to certain christmas songs which was becoming a popular trend in 2010. Right. we had a bunch of onlookers and people stop by and take videos my dad always ate that up. This was on a night where there was a light snowfall, and it was below freezing out, so not the weather a lot of onlookers would want to come and check out the display. There were a couple that we noticed, a woman and then a man. The woman left after a few minutes. The man stayed and admired it. We saw a smile on his face. He stayed for quite some time, actually, and I knew my dad loved that. Eventually it got late, and it started snowing a little heavier, so my dad pulled the plug on the lights for the night. Quite literally pulled the plug. The lights and music outside stopped, and on that note, that meant the night was approaching its end. Everyone went upstairs to shower or brush their teeth or do whatever they had to do. I went to my room upstairs and looked out the window, as a curiosity thing to see how many people still had their lights on at this hour. Only a couple houses. But I picked up on more than just that. That man who was admiring the lights was still outside on the sidewalk facing the house, Wow! all the lights were now off. Wow. I called my dad over, a bit confused and concerned. He came to the window with me and looked out. What do you think he's doing? I asked. I don't know, my dad said. We both assumed the guy might be waiting for the lights to turn back on. Either that or he may be loony, or both. My dad said just lower the blinds and ignore it. He'll go away eventually. Is he though? I brushed my teeth, got some water, then turned off my light and climbed into bed. I heard the little flakes of snow tapping on the window, a sound I always found very relaxing, but I wasn't relaxed. I was wide awake and curious. I had to look out my window. I pulled the blind up just a little to sneak a peek outside. The man was gone, but I could see footprints in the snow on our front lawn, which started from the sidewalk. Curiosity got the best of me. I tiptoed downstairs to the front door. 
which has three square glass windows at the top of it. I peeked through that glass, and I wish I hadn't. He was standing on the other side of the door, looking at the glass window. A big smile on his face, accentuating his crow's feet and smile lines. He had a mustache and was wearing one of those old-time wool caps and a large black coat. Oh my god. He had a look of crazy in his eye. For that brief couple of seconds I looked at him before falling back screaming. Everyone came out of their rooms in response to my screams. I pulled the front door open for my dad to see. The man wasn't on the stoop anymore, but we saw him quickly walking across the street into the park. My dad, brother, and I all rushed to put on our shoes, skipping the coats so to not waste time. We chased after him by following his footprints into the park. I was so cold it felt like thousands of icicles were stabbing my body. We got across the street to the park and went into the trees, but following the footprints got harder under the trees as less snow had accumulated until there was not enough snow. You don't too much. You don't too much. I mean, I get it though. You got a club gene. And because it's a, because it's a gene, everybody has it. What was that noise? See, I don't got time for it. I don't, got, I don't got time for the clutchness right now. I do not have time for the clutchness. What was that noise? I know y'all heard that. Stop playing. Well, at all to even leave footprints in, we had to give up and run back home to warmth. Technically, Please. we don't know if that man did anything illegal, just downright disturbing and creepy. Maybe he was messing with my family. Maybe he was mentally ill. None of these questions will ever be answered, though. What you talking about? Him being a clucky? Him being sus is illegal as hell. I was on my way home from working a graveyard shift on Christmas Eve night. It was a Jesus. snowy night. The roads were icy and slippery. I was driving slow and cautious, listening to Christmas music. There were next to no cars on the road at all, just the occasional snowplow truck. I was on a quiet service road when I came to a red light. There were two cars in front of me. The light quickly turned green, but the cars didn't move. I'm not the type to honk, if ever, but after 30 seconds of neither of the cars moving, I finally tapped on the horn. Still nothing. The car in front of me wasn't even honking at the car in front of him. Another like 20 seconds passed and I honked again. That's cuz, that's cuz, that's cuz, that's cuz, that cuz, day in cahoots. Cahoots. Just saying. Cahoots. That's the only logical explanation I can think of. I noticed someone on the sidewalk watching this happen. I thought he must be thinking, what an asshole, whoever's in the front car. We were sitting there so long now that the light changed to red again. Like I said, I'm not the type to honk, so I'm definitely not the type to get out of my car and confront someone. But this was too much. <laughs> I was exhausted and wanted to go home. I got out from my car and walked over to the car in front of me, which for the record was still on. Both of them were. When I knocked on the window, I looked inside. The car was empty. I walked to the car in front of it, and it was empty too. There was no so way to explain around. this. Two running cars blocking a lane. No one inside either of them. No signs of an accident Driver. or anything. I was ready to ask that guy on the sidewalk if one of these cars were his, but when I looked in the- I was ready to clock and haul ass. I can't really curse because, you know what I mean, I was fa like, I was family right now, and I'm pretty sure they can hear me, so I'm not, you know what I mean, just haul it. What you doing, what you doing outside? Because you don't too much. Just relax. I don't know why you just didn't drive around. I feel like any regular person would have just- Drove around, but as they drove around, looked in the car as they passed by. Not still behind the cars, and definitely not get out the car. Because a person that's on the side of the street, on the sidewalk, watching everything going on, 
could be sus and cahoots or sus hoots. Direction where he was standing, he wasn't there anymore. The light turned green. Okay, whatever. I was gonna drive around them on the opposite side of the road and be gone. So that's what I did. I was way too unsettled to stick around there. A few blocks down, I saw a cop car parked in an empty parking lot. Unfortunately, I missed the entrance, so I started honking my horn and flashing my lights to get his attention, and it worked. He turned his car on and exited the parking lot to pull up behind me on the road. It felt like he was pulling me over, kind of, because he exited his car to walk up to mine. I didn't leave my car as a respect thing, I guess. I lowered my window and told him about the two weird abandoned cars back there and how they were obstructing traffic. He thanked me and said he'd check it out. Then his attention turned Sus. to something in the back seat, and he said, why is he laying on the floor like that? What? I said. I turned around and saw a hooded man laying on the floor of my car. I screamed in front of the cop. I stepped out and yelled at the cop that I didn't know him. The cop drew his gun and ordered the guy to step out with his hands raised. He did so. When the man was in handcuffs, I recognized him as the guy standing on the side of the road. So I told him. The, the cop called for backup. He shook my hand and told me he'd take care of the rest and to get home safe and we wished each other a Merry Christmas. I drove home with a mix of emotions, but that Christmas, all I know is I had a newfound appreciation for police officers. Hell yeah. My wife and I live in a duplex in Queens, New York. Last month, right. two upper middle-aged women moved in next door. We never had the chance to greet them the first few days. They seemed very quickly in and out at first. On, say, the fourth day, I caught one of the women carrying a box from her car into her side of the house, so I walked out to finally greet her. Her name is Frances, and she seemed normal enough, but she also seemed like she was in a hurry, so I didn't steal too much of her time. The next day was Christmas Eve, so my wife and I were preparing to host my sister and their families. During our Christmas Eve dinner, which was going completely normal, we all went silent and looked at the door when we all heard the sound of someone trying to push open the locked door. Wow. I got up and opened the door to see who it was. By the time I opened the door, there was no one on the stoop, but there was this woman walking down the sidewalk. I began to call out, but stopped mid-first word, deciding not to even bother. Maybe she had the wrong house, and that's what I said to my family when I sat down. Wrong house. My family all left around 9 that night. After that, the wife and I began our cleanup. I was mid-washing dishes when the front door opened and then shut pretty aggressively. In my head, it could have been my wife or any of my sisters returning because they forgot something. When I called for my wife and she answered from a different room, I knew it wasn't her. So I turned off the sink, dried my hands, and walked into the living room. There was a woman sitting in my big recliner chair in the corner. She was looking at the wall, muttering something to herself. I recognized her to be one of the women from next door. My wife entered the room and gasped. I calmly told the woman she was on the wrong side of the house. Then she looked at me and continued muttering inaudible words. There was clearly some form of dementia. I told my wife to go hurry and knock on the neighbor's door. My wife left and was back with Frances surprisingly quickly. Frances seemed very relieved and grabbed the woman by the arm and pulled her off the chair and out of the house to their side. Frances came back a minute later to apologize and explain that her sister has what's known as sundowning syndrome, a form of dementia in which the symptoms get worse as the day goes on. I asked a question I felt- So... AKA, like, sundown syndrome, I don't know, I don't know if I said that right. That translates to the Kluck syndrome. Okay. Cause that's that's what's about to go down. <sighs> Rather important, which was does she get aggressive at all in this state? I didn't like her answer. Yeah. She said it's just best to leave her alone later in the day when she starts acting up. I wasn't overly friendly no, considering I was pretty taken aback by what just happened, but I wasn't rude either. Frances left, and my wife and I just looked at each other with these what-the-hell-just-happened looks on our faces. Anyway, this time I remembered to lock the door. The next day, we went to my wife's parents' house for Christmas dinner. It was a nice time. We got home late since they live about an hour away. 
so I'd say we got home around 11. We cuddled up in bed and watched whatever Christmas movie was still on at that point. After that, our Christmas was over, and we cut the TV and went to sleep. My eyes opened to a dark room. Oh, okay. I sensed I had been woken right. up by a noise. I looked around the room and spotted her walking out of the room and into the hall. Honey, are you okay? Huh? I heard next to me in a groggy, half-asleep voice. My wife was still laying next to me in the bed. I leaped out of bed, looked down the hall, and saw the tall, lanky figure of who I could only assume to be that woman from next door. She noticed me in the doorway. I yelled wrong house before slamming the bedroom door shut and locking it. I heard her march down the hall back to our door and try opening it. She tried pushing and shoving the door, making these weird, angry noises. I called the police and said our new neighbor with dementia had broken in and might possibly be violent. I requested they ring the neighboring door to wake up Frances and get her to come in here. Waiting for the Francis. police was a miserable, nail-biting experience. When they finally did come, I left our room and went to the front door to let them in. Frances came in with the police, extremely worried and apologetic. Her sister was walking around in our basement all confused-like. Frances took her back to the other side once again then came back out to talk with the police and I. She expressed sincere sorrow and gratitude for me not hurting her. I told her firmly this was not okay, and warned if this happened again that I would consider pressing charges. From that point on, we obviously locked everything, including windows. Nah, nah, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna press charges, but this happens again. I'm about to cluck you up. Just saying, make sure this never happens again. And then press charges, and then move six miles out, and then get a whole new ID, and then get hell of Adidas, and then I don't know, I'm just I'm just gonna put, I'm just gonna say, and then and then y'all just fill in the blank <laughs> like fill in the blank like, fill, like in a conversation below, and then and then blank, blank, blank. Put that in the comment section of like what y'all would do. And then, like, put it in the comment section. And then, and then fell out. <laughs> and then. Francis's sister eventually went to go live with their mother instead. Thank God for us. Clark Francis. As a father of two, Christmas is already a stressful time of year for me. Two Christmases ago, my kids were still in love with the idea of Santa Claus. After watching the Polar Express as a family, my wife tucked the kids into bed and she started putting the presents under the tree. I didn't really do any of that stuff. I just laid in bed watching something on TV waiting for her to come up. By the time she was done, we were ready for bed. We're early birds when it comes to sleep. I'm also a pretty good sleeper. I'm lucky enough to be able to knock out within a few minutes. And waking up in the middle of the night is unusual for me which is why I was confused at first when I woke up that night. Then I realized why. My daughter Kelsey was in the room, saying daddy over and over. I rubbed my eyes and asked her what's wrong. She had this cute little happy smile on her face as she said, Santa's here. I smiled back at her, saying yes he is. I told her she better be quiet and hurry back to her room so that Santa doesn't find out she's awake. She giggled and said okay, and walked out of my room, leaving My bad. I was looking behind because I know I closed that door. And then when I just randomly looked over here, the door's cracked. You know what I'm saying? I can't do nothing. I mean, I don't mind, you know what I mean? Having my family is just having your own space is nice too. <laughs> um, I, when when you all realize, because I know I have like kids that watch my videos. When y'all realize, I'm going to just say it right now. I don't mean to be that person, but it needs to be said. Santa Claus is not real. If he is, I'm sorry. You know, I haven't been to the North. I have not been to the North Pole myself to say if he is. Maybe he is. I don't know. But I haven't seen Santa Claus. Not the real Santa Claus. But. 
But if I'm just gonna say Santa Claus isn't real, but if he is, then he is. But Santa Claus isn't real. So <laughs> if you don't don't go to your parents, you know what I mean, or whoever you live with, talk about some in the middle middle of the night, talk about some. Hey, wake up, mom, dad, Santa Claus is here. Uh, what? <laughs> They're gonna be like, oh, who? Stumbo, about he in the house? Okay. Okay. No, he not. Okay, time to clutch shit up. He not at my house. He not, nope, no, he not. Because don't be surprised when you say, you know what I mean, to your parents, Santa Claus is here. Santa Claus is in the house. And then they look at you like, uh, what? She talking about? He in this house? <laughs> Hell nah. Cause let one of my kids, if I'm like when I just when I do decide to have kids, let one of my kids be like, Santa Claus is in the house. Oh no, the hell he not. Not in my house. <laughs> what? No. Bill then said okay and walked out of my room, leaving the door open. I laid back down and tried to get back to sleep. A couple minutes later, I heard some shuffling around downstairs. I sighed because I knew Kelsey probably went down there to open her presents early, which is what she did the year before. I reluctantly got up and walked towards the stairs. As I started clomping down the stairs, the noises I was hearing ceased. I got to the bottom step and I was in the living room by the tree. The lights on the tree were still on, I guess because it was Christmas Eve night. All the presents seemed to still be there, so Kelsey wasn't going through them after all. Still, I walked around the living room and dining room whispering her name just to see if she was hiding somewhere. I gave up and went back up the stairs. I was about to go to my wife and I's room when I decided I'd step into Kelsey's room just to check if she was in there. Oh man. And she was. Okay. She was sitting up in her bed wide awake. I asked her why she went downstairs when I told her to go to bed. She whispered excitedly, it wasn't me, Santa's down there. Oh my god. I tried to begin a sentence but stuttered, then froze. I ran down the stairs and turned on the lights looking around the whole house. Then I found that the back door was open. Nobody locked it. Someone had broken into our house on Christmas Eve night right under our noses and stole a few of the presents left under the tree, according to my wife. The worst part about this is I heard whoever was down there. In fact, my seven-year-old daughter did too. Hell, she even came into my room and basically gave me a warning. It still kills me to this day. Yeah, yeah. If you tell your parents Santa Claus is in the house, don't be surprised at don't don't be surprised at their reaction and what they might do. Just saying, cause Santa Claus isn't real. And when you tell so when you tell your parents that, that's not Santa Claus. It's not. It's a thief, a robber. Or a clucky, you know, come come to cluck you up. So just saying, the only thing they not they not they not just clucking up the cookies and milk. Just that, that was that a bad joke? I think that was a bad joke. <laughs> um, but yeah, I really hope this video comes out Mommy. like my see, Mommy. see. I really hope my reaction comes out either today or on Christmas. But um. Yeah, if y'all still believe in Santa Claus, Santa Claus isn't real. Sorry to break the news to you, but sorry. Oh, somebody had to tell you. Excuse me. But, so with that being said, I hope everybody has a great Christmas. Happy New Year's. Hope everybody, you know what I mean, drink as much eggnog as you can because eggnog is bomb as hell. It's even more good when you add a little bit of nog to it, like extra nog, and then when you mix it with like some, like some liquor. Oh my God. Jesus. But... What's that noise? All this, all this random noises. I don't got time for this. Every time, every time I creep myself out or something happens 
when I react to a Mr. Nightmare video. Jesus. But yeah. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. And I'll see y'all later. I love you. Keep it cool. Keep it classy. And I love you. Stay happy. My family.